Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at OpenTelemetry with GraphQL. So how you can really turn the lights on in Hot Chocolate and GraphQL. Before we get started, I have a new course, Getting Started with GraphQL and C Sharp on Dome Train. This course is not the typical Getting Started course that you find everywhere else. With over seven and a half hours of content, this course really dives deep. It will teach you how to get started with GraphQL in .NET, but also dives deep into patterns and best practices in GraphQL and also explores topics like schema evolution. The first 300 people will get a 20% discount with the code STYPE20. If you want to dive even deeper into GraphQL, you can sign up to one of our online workshops where the Chili Cream team will teach you all about GraphQL from backend to frontend and where you get the time with the core developers of this platform to ask them everything you want to know about GraphQL and the hot chocolate tools. Since I'm launching my new course on Dome Train, you also get to have a 30% discount on all of our online workshops. The code for that and the links to the workshop and the course you find in the description below the video. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. So let's dive in. This is one of the subgraphs we are building in our online workshop where we are building a web shop. It only deals with the product catalog and we're gonna instrument it with open telemetry to turn on the lights and find a couple of bugs. We didn't even know that they existed. So what we are going to do is we dive here in the program CS and this is a typical GraphQL setup you find in most GraphQL servers where we have here our GraphQL configuration. We have a couple of application services that are registered here, but there's nothing special to it. So what we are going to do is add some open telemetry into it. The first thing we got to do is add a couple of packages. So we have open telemetry in here. So I'm editing the csproj file and in there, we're going to add a couple of packages for open telemetry. These three packages down here add instrumentation for ASP.NET Core, for the HTTP client and also for the runtime. Another package we have to put in here is the diagnostics package for hot chocolate. So let's actually chain that up here and it's called hotchocolate.diagnostics, this guy here. And last but not least, we are using PostgreSQL here as a database. So we're going to also add the NPG SQL open telemetry package. So let's just duplicate this line here and then say NPG SQL open telemetry. And uh, we have version 803 for that. With that in place, let's go back to our program CS. And now we can chain in actually the open telemetry configuration here. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up open telemetry. So we're gonna say here builder.services at open telemetry. Let's reformat that. And then we're gonna chain in here with tracing. We're gonna focus on tracing in this episode because tracing gets you the most benefits at the beginning. Later on, metrics also make a lot of sense. But let's focus on one thing in this episode. So I'm adding here a configuration method. Let's quickly fix that up. And then we're gonna define what telemetry we wanna send to our open telemetry backend. So in this case, I want to have the ASP.NET Core instrumentation, and then we want the HTTP client instrumentation. This guy actually tells you what outgoing connections you have on your HTTP client. It's very useful if you're running a gateway project. In our case, we actually don't have a client, but I'm always putting it in. And then we also have here the hot chocolate instrumentation. So we're going to put that also in. And last but not least, we put MPG SQL in. So we're going to say MPG SQL, and that puts in the MPG SQL driver instrumentation. So with this setup, we have the open telemetry part configured, but we also have to configure up here the instrumentation because we are by default not putting spans around the execution. So you can do that by saying add instrumentation and that will put open telemetry spans all around uh, important parts of the GraphQL execution. So with this setup, we have open telemetry configured. We're gonna push that open telemetry data to Banana Cake Pop and use that to visualize it. Banana Cake Pop gives you a unique view on open telemetry data for GraphQL. So let's configure that quickly. 
I'm just running here my project. Then we get here our endpoint. Let's go actually to Banana Cake Pop. So on the GraphQL route, you find Banana Cake Pop. We can actually sign in here. And I'm doing that. You can either click down here or here. So we're going to create here an organization account to store our telemetry data. And this is actually free. So let's quickly set that up. I'm calling that YouTube. And then we're going to create that. So here's my organization. So I can select that. It asks me if I allow redirects to my local address here. And I'm saying yes. And that means I can now sign in with my local Banana Cake Pop instance and sync all the data to my local instance. So with that, we can create here a new API. And this API is which covers all our open telemetry data. So we call that the catalog API. And then it asks us which API type we prefer here. So an API collection is just a collection of documents. So you can basically provide one configuration for your API to interact with your backend and then store all the documents there. I'm going to use this API service, which has this monitoring cockpit, and that's what we're going to use. So I'm saying here, OK, and then we can configure the connection settings. You can skip over that. In my case, we're going to configure it. It's basically this URL to interact with our local dev instance. So we pass that on, and that allows us to do some demo queries later. With that, we are done. We can save that. And then we can configure actually our stages. These are our environments. So I want to have two environments. So I take the default setup here, which has a dev stage and a prod stage. So let's apply that. And then you can see here's our API. We don't have any requests yet. So there's no telemetry data. So let's head back to Rider. We actually need one more package. So I'm going here on my project and we're going to edit it. So I'm saying edit a project file. And then we're going to add here another package reference. This time we are adding the Banana Cake Pop Services, this guy here. And we are taking the last version of it, Banana Cake Pop Services 3.2.0. And with that, we can go back to our program CS here. And then we can chain that in. So we want to have the Banana Cake Pop Services. We want to also configure it. And here we're going to provide the API ID. We need to provide an API key. And we also have to provide a stage. So that's the stage where the telemetry data is coming from. So the API ID you can actually grab from Banana Cake Pop. It's this guy here. But there's also a way to just uh, get all of these API and API key from the console. And for that, we're going to use a tool called Barista. And Barista is basically the person who makes the coffee or the hot chocolate in a coffee shop. And uh, that is our tooling that we have to orchestrate all of this. So we're going to install a new .NET tooling. For that, we have to create a new tool manifest. And then we're going to install here .NET tool install Barista. And with that in place, we can use Barista to, for instance, list our API. Before we actually can use Barista, we got to log in. So we run Barista login. This will pull up here the sign-in page for Banana Cake Pop. Since we already signed up with our actual instance, I don't have to retype my password. So I can just pick here the organization I want to sign into it. And then we can go back to Rider. So Barista will now ask me into which workspace I want to sign in. I just have the default workspace. So I'm going to pick that. And with that, we can ask for the APIs that we actually have here. I ran here Barista API list, and that gives me here this ID. That's our API ID, so I'm putting it here. And by the way, if you don't have a clue what Barista actually can do, you can just run Barista. And if we just run that, it will print out all the commands it has. Here you can see I can do an API key, I can interact with APIs, and many more things. And for each of the subcategories, we can also say barista API dash key, for instance. If I run that, I get here the help. You can see for the API key, I can create, delete, or list an API key. In our case, we're going to create one. And then I can pick here the API for which I need an API key. I'm going to say this one. And then the API key is generated. It's this guy here, secret. Not this guy down here. It's uh, really this secret that the most often made mistakes to pick this ID, but actually it's this secret. And after this command is vanished from your console, you cannot retrieve it anymore. So copy it quickly. Okay, with this pasted in here, we have almost everything configured. 
Like the telemetry is configured, our Banana Kpop services are configured. So by default, Banana Kpop will just report the operations that run through your GraphQL server, so the GraphQL operations. But it will not pass on telemetry. For this, you have to opt in. And you go here to tracing, and then you say add Banana Kpop exporter. And now the telemetry is also running through Banana Kpop. So we're going to start that and then we're going to go back to Banana Kpop here. Let's create a new document and that is a query document. And in this query document, we're going to create a query here, get brands and products. And we're going to take this brands resolver here. From that, we pick here the name of the brands. Then we dive into the products. We're going to take the ID and the name. And we also going to go for the product type here. And we are also picking the brand. We also have the brand actually at top, but let's still pick that one. And let's discover what is all wrong with this query. So we're gonna run the ad a couple of times. We have to run it a couple of times because we need to fill the internal open telemetry buffer. The telemetry is batched, so it would be inefficient if we did for every request or for every telemetry entry one request to the backend. This should be enough. Let's go to our dashboard. And there you can see now we have requests. Here's the client others. This is an unknown client. We haven't registered that. So it's just noted here as others. We can see here our API and you can see here a bit the latency and the throughput. We can dive into our telemetry and then you can see here there are requests coming in more and more and we can see some other statistics here about throughput and errors, whatever. But down here we actually have the queries. And what you can already see is that there are introspection queries that are not even, we didn't execute them. These are introspection queries that were executed by Banana Kpop to inspect the schema. This is the query that we actually did. We can dive into that. And now we get the telemetry for this particular request. You can also see this is a latency distribution across this particular request. We can dive into this request. And if you look at normal open telemetry solutions, you always have this HTTP endpoint, which is the leading thing. But in our case, we identify the GraphQL request around it, even if it's uh, persisted queries or whatnot. And it's very easy to spot here errors. So what we can already see is this is our GraphQL request. We can also dive into that. We're not sending in the GraphQL document over the telemetry data. We're actually uploading that separately. So you also have just an overview of the requests that are going through your system. And we are linking these with the telemetry data. Apart from that, we have here our resolvers. This is the brands resolver that is calling the database. But we also can see a lot of other resolvers, for instance, the product resolver, you don't see a database entry down here because that is using a data loader down here. You can see the data loader and that is using the catalog DB. So all these resolvers, which are async resolvers, are actually using this data loader down here to fetch the data. What I also can see here that the name field of brands is actually an async field, which is strange and would actually make this resolver a lot slower. Apart from that, we can go down here and we can see we are fetching brand. And actually this is using another two data calls with the brand by ID data loader, which is strange because we already have the data for this particular brand right at the top here. So we are doing unnecessary database calls and we're gonna fix that. And let's actually make this request more efficient. So we know this is kind of strange, and also that we fetch data for this guy here is kind of strange. This adds another two milliseconds onto our request. So we're gonna reduce that. Let's go back to Rider and let's first look at our brands model. And on there we can see, ah, this guy is actually using a middleware. And you can see this is a descriptor attribute which then uses here the descriptor to create a middleware and this middleware is async and that's why the whole resolver becomes async. We can actually use something more efficient which is a result formatter here which then is sync which just operates on the result and that's all we need here and that allows us to fold in this resolver in its parent which is much faster from the execution. So let me quickly do that. So I've rewritten that to a result formatter here which is an optimization so there's no async anymore involved. So we are done with this. And the second part was actually that we resolved the brands, although we already had the brands at top. So how that works is that we have the brands queries here 
and the brands queries are actually using here our business layer to get the brands, these guys here. And from the product, when we get brands, we are actually using also the business layer. Let's go to the product. So in the product, you can see down here, that is where we get the brand for the product. And that uses actually this data loader up here. So the brand by ID data loader. So this is all in the same business layer located. So we can actually update this guy here, the get brands, which sits on the top. And then we just capture the page that we have here, the page of brands. And with that captured, we can just pre-fill our data loader. So we provide here the data loader with the brand that we have now in memory already and with the key how to fetch this brand. And with that, the data loader cache is pre-initialized and all the resolvers in the whole query can now participate of this cache. So let's rerun that. I'm going here back to the query and we're gonna rerun that. And again, we are filling our buffer here. Okay, that should be enough. Let's go here to the catalog API and you can see there are requests now coming in. And we again pick here our brands and products query. And uh, then we're gonna dive in and I already see the change here. Like we have still products here, which is end queuing. Then we have down here the dispatch to our data loader to fetch all the products in one go. And then you can see down here this span to fetch the brand is now a lot smaller because we are just reusing the cache of the data loader. And when I look down here, it's now just one database call that we're gonna do. And that is with the product type by ID data loader. This we don't have, so we have to do the second database call but this is fine. Our overall request is now much more efficient. And with this, we are done. This was the getting started with OpenTelemetry and GraphQL and showed you a quick way to turn the lights on in your GraphQL server and show you the problems that you might have in your requests. Turns out when we started using that, we immediately saw bugs we didn't know about. So try it out and push your data to Banana Cake Pop and have this integrated dashboard. I'm gonna show more around open telemetry with metrics and also for subscription, we have a special dashboard to show you really what is active on your subscription system with Hot Chocolate 14. But we're gonna dive into that in another episode. Please help our open source project by giving us a star on GitHub. This is the easiest way to help any open source project. So star the open source projects that you are using. And with that, I'm out.